Hello, first of all, thank you for this opportunity. We are really grateful to share this work with all of you. My name is Natalia Lagarta. The current clinical case was written when I was the chief of resident at Hospital Infecciosa Francisco Javier Muñiz. I was done together with Catalina Gauder and Piren Zambrano, who were in their first year of internship at the time. Currently, they are in the final year of their internship and I am working as a permanent staff member in another hospital laboratory in Buenos Aires in the chemical clinic area. This work is about disseminated histoplasmosis with adrenal compromise and the role of the chemical clinic laboratory in its diagnosis. I will start with a brief introduction about this mycosis. Histoplasmosis is an infection caused by the inhalation of histoplasma capsulatum spores. This mycosis is endemic in Central and South America. The inhalation of histoplasma spores can lead to different clinical presentations, such as asymptomatic infection or mild self-limited pneumonitis. However, in certain populations, this infection could evolve into a disseminated disease, involving different organs, including the adrenal gland. One of the factors that increase the risk of dissemination is AIDS, with CD40 lymphocytes number less than 150 cells per microliters. Even though adrenal insufficiency caused by histoplasma capsulatum is not a frequent infection, immunocompromised patients, mainly those with compromised cellular immunity, are more susceptible to developing these kinds of infection which has a severe impact on their health and it also means a life risk when this infection is not treated or is treated improperly. This clinical case is from a 60 years old male patient, originally from Bolivia, positive for HIV, who had restarted his antiretroviral therapy 11 days before hospital admission. He attended the medical emergency service due to abdominal pain and fever and it was decided to hospitalize him. On physical exam, he presented a left lateral aortic adenopathy. His blood test showed a CD40 lymphocytes number of 27 cells per microliters and a viral low of 97,264 copies per cubic millimeter. Chest X-ray showed three bulb and micronodular patterns and multiple nodules with random distribution in both lungs areas. These are typical pulmonary patterns of mycosis caused by histoplasma capsulatum. Abdominal ultrasound showed small adenopathies in different parts of the gastrointestinal tract with a great amount of fluid. As the adenopathies were difficult to access, it was impossible to take a sample for a diagnostic biopsy. Instead, laboratory tests such as urinary antigen, PCR and serology for histoplasma capsulatum were done, all of them giving a positive result. With the results, the patient was diagnosed with disseminated histoplasmosis and started treatment with enfotericin B for 13 days. Control lab results during hospitalization show persistent mild hyponatremia and hyperkalemia. The medical team suspected adrenal insufficiency secondary to histoplasmosis. As the patient condition did not allow an uh, adrenal biopsy, lab staff suggested to the infectiology service to request the cortisol level test in serum to dismiss the adrenal involvement. The results obtained using electrochemioluminescence immunoassay showed that the serum cortisol level was 2 micrograms per deciliter. In this picture, we can see that this basal serum cortisol level, according to the Sociedad Argentina de Endocrinología y Metabolismo, is highly suggestive of adrenal insufficiency. With this evidence, the diagnosis of disseminated histoplasmosis with adrenal involvement was concluded. Therefore, the infectology service decided to complement the treatment that had already been established with glucocorticoids. 
hydrocortisone 10 mg each 8 hours. Ultimately, the patient evolved favorably and was discharged after he completed the treatment with emphotericin B. Despite being discharged, he continued ambulatory treatment with itraconazole, trimetroprima succamoxafol, antiretroviral therapy, and hydrocortisone. Adrenal involvement in patients with disseminated histoplasmosis is rare. Less than 10% of patients with this type of mycosis develop this complication. It is important to suspect adrenal hypofunction in patients with compromised cellular immunity when they have suggestive laboratory findings such as hyponatremia and hyperkalemia, which was the case of our patient, and less commonly hypoglycemia and hypercalcemia. Patients with adrenal insufficiency secondary to histoplasmosis must be treated not only with entalfangals but also with glucocorticoids. It is crucial to remember that treatment only with entalfangals will not prevent the development of an acute adrenal crisis. As patients with AIDS and histoplasmosis usually have a deteriorated health condition and it's very difficult to take samples for a biopsy. It is essential to check their serum cortisol level. A low level, less than 3 micrograms per deciliter, is highly suggestive of adrenal insufficiency. This clinical case is only one of the many examples of the importance of the interdisciplinary work in a healthcare team. For early pathology diagnosis, an appropriate treatment in order to avoid further complications. Experience shows us that the knowledge exchange between professionals should be the mainstay on which the healthcare team should lean in order to improve the quality of attention that patients receive. With this conclude our presentation. Thank you for your attention. Below is my email in case you have any queries.